Welcome to this course on Introduction to Marketing Essentials. Now we will talk about Module 36. So we are still talking about managing successful product, services and brands and this part 4 is covered in Module 36. What we will do in this module is to describe the brand value chain, explain how a company should manage the brand over time and describe the key aspects of luxury branding. Now let us look at what is the brand value chain. The brand value chain is a structured approach to assessing the source and outcome of brand equity. The source and outcome both 1 and 2 and the way marketing activities create brand value. So we will talk, we will see that in figure 36.1 and it is based on several premises. The first one is when the brand value creation begins when the firm target actual or potential customers by investing in a marketing program to develop the brand, including marketing communication, trade or intermediary support and product research, development and design. Thus, marketing activity will change consumer's mindset that is customer's thought and feelings that become linked to the brand. So now here we are talking of those marketing activities which will change consumer mindsets that is consumer thoughts and feeling that have become linked to the brand. Next, these consumers' mindset will affect buying behavior and the way consumers respond to all subsequent marketing activities like pricing, distribution channels, communication and the product itself, which will affect the resulting market share and profitability of the brand. Finally, the investment community will consider the market performance of the brand when assessing shareholder value in general and the value of a brand in particular. So this is the brand value chain. Here are the, the value stages. The first is the marketing program investment. Then we have the consumer mindsets, brand performance and shareholder value. Now in between lies the multipliers. So here you have program multipliers, customer multipliers and market multipliers. So marketing program investments include investments in product, communication, trade, employees and other things. Consumer mindsets include what consumers, uh, what, what is there in the consumer's mind uh, so far as awareness, association, attitude, attachment and activities concerned. Brand performance is the price premium, price elasticities, market share, expansion success, cost structure and profitability. And at the end there is shareholder value that is the stock prices, price earning ratio and market capitalization. Now, in between these four value stages are three multipliers, program multipliers, customer multipliers and market multipliers. So program multipliers include distinctiveness, relevance, integrated value, excellence. Customer multipliers include competitive reactions, channel support and customer size and profile. And market multipliers include market dynamics, growth potential, risk profile and brand contribution. Now, the model also assumes that three multipliers increase or decrease the value that can flow from one stage to another. The program multipliers determine the marketing program's ability to affect the consumer mindset and is a function of the quality of the program investment. The customer multiplier determine the extent to which the value created in the minds and heart of consumers affect market performance. This result depends on competitive superiority, channel and other intermediary support and customer size and profile. The market multiplier determines the extent to which the value shown by the market performance of a brand is manifested in shareholder value. It depends in part on the actions of financial analysts and investors. What is brand dynamics? Most brands don't stay the same, they evolve over time. They keep on changing over time. So the two most common ways in which brands evolve are through brand repositioning and brand extensions. What is brand repositioning? Any new development in the marketing environment can affect a brand's fortune. Nevertheless, several brands have managed to make impressive comebacks in the automotive market. Cadillac, Fiat and Volkswagen have all turned their brand fortunes around. Similarly, General Motors' rescue of its fading Cadillac brand was fueled by a complete overhaul of its product lineup with new design that redefined its looks and styling. Often the first thing to do in repositioning a brand is to understand what the source of brand equity were to begin with. 
So when we are repositioning the brand, we have to first understand what are the sources of brand equity when we started. Are positive associations losing their strengths or uniqueness or have negative associations become linked to the brand? So that will tell us what is happening with the brand. And then we decide whether to retain the same positioning or to create a new one. And if so, what new positioning to create? Sometimes the actual marketing program is the source of the problem because it fails to deliver on the brand promise. Then a back to basic strategy may make sense. Harley Davidson regained its market leadership by doing a better job of living up to customer expectations for product performance. So this is how Harley Davidson, they become the market leader. In other cases, however, the old positioning is just no longer viable and a reinvention strategy is necessary. Mountain Dew completely overhauled its brand image to become a soft drink powerhouse. This is obviously a continuum of repositioning strategies with pure back to basics at one end and pure reinvention at the other and many combinations in between. The challenge is often to change enough to attract some more customers but not so much as to alienate the old one. So with this repositioning, the challenge is that we also want to attract new customers but also we do not want to lose the old ones. What are brand extensions? When a firm uses an established brand to introduce a new product in a different category or price tier, the resulting offering is called brand extension. New product in a different category or a different price, price tier, then the resulting offering is called the brand extension. Honda has used its company's name to cover such different brands such as automobiles, motorcycles, snowblowers, lawn mowers, marine engines and snowmobiles. This suit of products allows the firm to advertise that it can fit six Honda in a two-car garage. When marketers combine a new brand with an existing brand, the brand extension can also be called as a sub-brand such as Hershey's Kisses Candy, Adobe Acrobat Software, Toyota Camry Automobiles and Courtyard by Marriott Hotels. The existing brand that gives birth to a brand extension or sub-brand is the parent brand. If the parent brand is already associated with multiple products through brand extensions, it can also be called as master brand or family brand. So these are the two similar terms. Brand extensions are distinct from line extensions. Unlike brand extension in which a company stretches its brand to a product category with which it is not currently associated, in a line extension the parent brand covers new product within a product category it currently serves such as with new flavors, forms, colors, ingredient and package size. Many firms leverage their most valuable asset by introducing a host of new product under their strongest brand names. So when to extend a brand? So that is a important question. Marketers must judge each potential brand extension by how effectively it leverages existing brand equity from the parent brand as well as by how effectively it contributes to the parent brand's equity. Successful brand extensions occur when the parent brand is seen as having favorable associations and there is a perception of fit between the parent brand and the extension product. The fit can involve products related attributes and benefits as well as attributes and benefits related to common usage situation or user types. A brand that is seen as prototypical of a product category can be difficult to extend outside the category. For example, extended the Coca-Cola brand to fresh squeezed juices might be challenging because of the prototypical nature of the brand in the carbonated cola category. Vertical extension often requires sub-branding strategies to prevent negative brand associations in the case of upscale extensions and brand dilution and product cannibalization in the case of downscale extensions. One major mistake in evaluating extension opportunities is failing to take all consumers' brand knowledge into account and focusing instead on one or a few brand associations as a potential basis of fit. And there are several advantages of brand extension. Consumers form expectations about a new product based on what they know about the parent brand. 
So that is the problem. What the consumers know about the parent brand, so they base their expectation for the new product also on that knowledge. And the extent to which they feel this information is relevant, thereby setting up positive expectations, extension reduces risk. It also make it easier to convince retailers to stock and promote a brand because of anticipated increased customer demand. And introductory campaign can concentrate on the new product itself due to established brand awareness. Extensions can also help avoid the difficulty and expense of producing a new name. So that is again a big problem of finding a new name, thus allowing packaging and labeling efficiencies and if coordinated properly provide more prominence in the retail store via a billboard effect. Brand extensions help clarify the meaning of a brand and its core values or improve customer loyalty to the company creating the extensions. A successful category extension not only reinforces the parent brand and opens new markets but also facilitates even more new category extensions. But there are several downsides and disadvantages of brand extensions. Line extensions may cause the brand name to be less strongly identified with any one product. Brand dilution occurs when consumers no longer associate a brand with a specific or highly similar set of products and start thinking less of a brand. And if a firm launches extensions that consumer deem inappropriate, so that is again consumer based, which extensions to launch. So when a firm launches extension that consumers deem inappropriate, they may question the integrity of the brand or become confused or even frustrated. Even if sales of a brand extensions are high and meet targets, the revenue may be coming from consumers switching to the extension from existing parent brand offering, in effect cannibalizing the parent brand. So this is, this is the problem that consumers are shifting from one brand to another and therefore cannibalizing the brands within the company. One easily overlooked disadvantage of brand extension is that the firm foregoes the chance to create a new brand with its own unique image and equity. So that is another problem. Why not develop a new brand with, with its own image and equity? For instance, consider the long-term financial advantage to Disney of having introduced more grown-up touchstone films. Now we will talk about managing a brand crisis. So marketing managers must assume a brand crisis will someday arise. Chick-fil-A, Domino's and Toyota have all experienced damaging and even potentially crippling brand crisis. Bank of America, JP Morgan, American Insurance Group and other financial service firms have been rocked by scandals that significantly eroded investor trust. Repercussions include lost sales, one, Reduced effectiveness of marketing activities, increased sensitivity to rival marketing activities, and reduced impact of firms' marketing activities on competing brands. In general, the stronger the brand and corporate image, especially for credibility and trustworthiness, the more likely the firm can weather the storm. However, careful preparation and well-managed crisis management programs are also critical. Consumers must see the firm's response as both swift and sincere. So it is not only about being swift or only about being sincere. Both of the things are to be done together. They must immediately sense that the company truly cares. The longer the firm takes to respond, the more likely consumers are to form negative impressions from unfavorable media coverage or word of mouth. Perhaps worse, they may find they don't like the brand after all and permanently switch. So that is a bigger problem, permanently switching, getting in front of a problem with public relations and perhaps even ads can help avoid those problems. The firm should take sincere efforts to manage crisis. The response includes acknowledging the impact on consumer and willingness to take necessary steps. Effective response reduces the like cleanness of consumers to form negative attributions. Now we will go about understanding how to construct a brand positioning bull's eye. 
The key to developing a meaningful brand positioning is using a systematic approach to design the different aspects of the brand in a way that is relevant and meaningful to the customer the firm is targeting. So this is the systematic approach to build the brand. Such a systematic approach is offered by the bullseye framework. We discuss the framework in the context of a hypothetical Starbucks example illustrated in the next slide. See also figure 36.2. So this is the brand positioning bull's eye. At the center is the brand mantra, which is covered by points of parity and points of differences. Then come substantiators and then executional property, visual identity, values, personality, characteristics. So now brand mantra is of in our hypothetical example of Starbucks. So this is the brand mantra, rich, rewarding coffee experience. What are the points of parity, convenient location, fair prices and socially responsible? What are the points of differences? Fresh, high quality coffee, variety of espresso drinks, fast personalized service. What are execution properties or visual identities? That is the Starbucks name, siren logo, green color. What are substantiators? Integrated supply chain, effective training of baristas, generous employee benefits and the value, personality and characteristics that is contemporary, thoughtful and caring. The inner circle of the bullseye is the brand mantra defining the essence of the brand and the core brand promise. It guides the action of companies, employees and collaborators by ensuring that they have a clear understanding of what the brand should represent to consumer. Brand mantra is at the heart of the bullseye and the guiding principle for all other aspects of brand positioning. One could define the Starbucks brand mantra as a rich, rewarding coffee experience. Although Starbucks has, has extended its offering to include non-coffee drinks, snacks and even wine, coffee and the experience of its consumption are at the core of the brand. Rich and rewarding capture both the physical and psychological aspect of the ideal Starbucks experience. The circle around the one that contains the brand mantra encompasses the brand's point of differentiation and points of parity that makes up its positioning. Points of parity and points of differences should be made as specific as possible without being too narrow and they should be constructed in terms of benefits a customer can derive from the product or service. Different competitors will suggest different points of differences and points of parities. With competitors such as mom and pop coffee stores, fast food restaurants like McDonald's and at home coffee brands in mind. Benefits such as offering fresh, high quality coffee, providing a variety of coffee drinks, delivering fast, personalized service can be viewed as potential points of differences for Starbucks. Whereas fair prices, availability of convenient location and social responsibility can be viewed as important points of parity for the brand. In the next concentric circle are the substantiators or the reasons to believe, attributes or benefits that provide factual or demonstrable support for the points of parity and points of differences. Substantiators are also referred to as reasons to believe because they are sometimes used in a company's communication campaign. So these substantiators are also reasons to believe. So why should consumers believe what the company is telling them? So that comes from substantiators. That is the reason to believe. Starbucks integrated supply chain, extensive training of baristas and generous employee benefit programs are among the factors that enable it to substantiate its positioning. Finally, the outer circle contains two relevant aspects of brand positioning. The first involves the brand values, personalities or character, intangible associations evoked by the words and actions that help to establish the tone of the brand. So, we are talking of brand values, personality and character. These are the intangible associations. For example, for Starbucks, one might think of a brand as contemporary, thoughtful and caring. The second aspect involves executional properties and visual identity. More tangible components of the brand that affect the way consumers perceive it. For Starbucks, this includes its brand name, logo and green and white color scheme categorizing the brand's visual appearance. Now let us look at another important concept that is luxury branding. Luxury brands 
are one of the purest examples of the role of branding because the brand and its image the brand and its image frequently offer key competitive advantage that create immense value for both the company and the customers marketers for luxury brands like prada gucci cartier and leo vuitton manage lucrative franchises that have endured for decades in what some believe is now dollar 300 billion industry what are the characteristics of a luxury brand priced significantly higher than typical items in their category so one is that they are priced significantly higher luxury brand for years were about social status and who a customer wants or perhaps wanted to be so it is about who the customer was or what he wanted to be times have changed and luxury in many developed countries have become more about style and substance combining personal pleasure and self expression so now you see how this the, the definition of luxury has changed now it is more about the style and substance combining personal pleasure and self expression a luxury shopper must feel he or she is getting something truly special thus the common denomination of luxury brands are quality and uniqueness so that is important uniqueness a winning formula for many is craftsmanship heritage authenticity and history that is often critical to justify a high price much of the growth in luxury brand in recent years has been geographic china has overtaken the united states as the world largest luxury market so now china buys more luxury uh, items as compared to us although initially very logo driven and interested in conspicuous brand signals chinese luxury consumers have become more conscious of quality and design like luxury consumers in other part of the world now how should we manage luxury brands luxury marketers have learned that luxury is not viewed the same way everywhere around the world so now the the problem is that this this word luxury means different things at different places but in the end luxury brand marketers have to remember they are often selling a dream so what is the common denominator is selling a dream which is anchored in product quality status and prestige so this dream is anchored in the product quality status and prestige just like marketers in less expensive categories those guiding the fortunes of luxury brand operate in constantly evolving marketing environment globalization new technologies shifting consumer cultures and other forces require them to be skillful and adapt to their brand stewardship so the problem with this changing environment is that comes from globalization new technologies shifting consumer cultures so this meaning of luxury it keeps on evolving to ensure success in such a dynamic environment marketers must adhere to general principles that apply in managing luxury brands and which are given below the first is all marketing decisions associated with luxury brands product service pricing sales incentives communication and distribution must be aligned to ensure that purchase and consumption experience are consistent with the image of the brand second is luxury branding typically includes the creation of a premium aspirational image so that are the two things that should be kept in mind even in the changing circumstances changing environment the luxury branding will include creation of a premium one and aspirational image two so whatever the marketing environment how whatever the changes that are happening there the typical brand a uh, typical the luxury brand will include creation of a premium aspirational image luxury brands frequently span categories and as a result their competitors are often defined broadly luxury brands must protect their identity and aggressively combat trademark infringement and counterfeits all attributes of luxury brands must be aligned with the image of the brand all attributes must be aligned with the image of the brand that include brand identifiers such as name logos symbols and packaging as well as brand associations such as personalities events countries and other entities so in order to conclude 
we started this module by covering the brand value chain and its different components. Then we have talked about brand dynamics, two most common ways in which brands evolve, brand repositioning and brand extensions. In the next part of the module was about how to manage a brand in crisis. We also discussed the construction of a brand positioning's bullseye with the example of Starbucks. Finally, we ended the module with discussions on luxury brands, their characteristics and how to manage them successfully. And these are the three books from which the material for this module was taken. Thank you.